Hey there, guys. My name is Rick Utzer here with Airgun Web, where we tell you the facts, not fluff, and we bring you old school Airgun reviews. Today, we're going to take a look at the new Gauntlet 2 from Umarex USA. Now, I've already shot this. We had it at Airgun Expo, kind of did a little overview of it. Today, we're going to dive in to some more of the features, see does it really hit some of those benchmarks that we're looking for. Let's get into it. Now the Gauntlet 2, uh, they've, they've obviously they've addressed some things that people wanted to see addressed. The original stock wasn't great; it was sort of a cobbled together amalgamation of parts. This is far more well thought out. In fact, when I look at this, I kind of think it's like the Umarex Hammer Junior uh, in the way it looks to me. It has very very similar styling to the Hammer, which I really like. So. I like this new stock. It is synthetic, but man, it feels far better put together than the original. And it seems like one cohesive thought went into building this stock uh, and the way the whole gun goes together. So I like this a lot better. You do have a quick release uh, connection there for a swivel. Uh, and also you have um, M-lock rails up here on the top where you could mount you know, your other swivel or uh, accessories, like I've got a, a rail here for a bipod. So the fact that you've got the M-Lock stuff, you've got the quick release here, you've got an adjustable cheek rest, it really feels good in the shoulder, it's very comfortable. Uh, I do like sort of the slim line uh, feel to it, it really shoulders well. So the whole thing they did with the stock, uh, that was absolutely two big thumbs up uh, as far as an improvement goes from the Gauntlet 1. Uh, the original Gauntlet had a 13 cubic inch bottle, 3000 PSI. The 25 was regged to about 1900. Um, they have taken that and just gone crazy. So you've got a 24 inch bottle here um, and it is um, 4500 PSI regged to 2100. So let's kind of put that in perspective for a minute. So before you may get about 1100 PSI with less volume of you know usable pressure. Now you're getting 2400 PSI with a lot more volume and usable pressure. What does that mean? That means you get a crap ton of shot count. Um, on paper it's talking about 100 shots. It does that easily. Uh, I didn't even have to work hard to make that 100 shot count. So let me tell you what I had to do. 25 cal pellets is what I'm shooting today is the 25 cal. Uh, they're actually kind of hard to come by. So I was like trying to scavenge what sort of uh, salvage pellets I could run through 100 plus shots without burning up my JSBs or something like that. So I did. I just sat down here and I just went one mag after the other. 13 mags is what I got uh, before I started to drop off the reg. That is a ton, you know, just so we can get my math right and I don't screw it up because doing math on the fly isn't my strong suit. Uh, 13 times 8 to 104 shots. So it's, they say 100, we definitely got it. Um, just awesome. So the bigger bottle, higher pressure, more pressure on the reg will, will equate to more power. We're going to talk about crony numbers here in just a second. All of that comes together like exceptionally well. Does it mess up the balance a little bit? Well, if I were going to hunt with this and be holding it in the field, it is front heavy. I don't think there's a way to get around that. But on a bench shooting off a bipod, absolutely no issue at all. It balances very well. Uh, if I were to take this in the field, I'd definitely use shooting sticks. That's how I would deal with it or brace up against a tree or whatever I would need to do to take a shot. But it is a little front heavy, not a big deal. Let's go ahead and talk about the crony numbers because does that... Uh, do we have consistency? Do we have the power? Uh, how did all that work out? It worked out stinking awesome. Uh, first thing, let's take a look at the Mark IIs. The Mark IIs, um, they were stout. Okay, we're pushing. Uh, best we got was 863 at 56 foot pounds. Uh, and if you talk about consistency, because really what you want is, okay, so that's max. What was the spread, Rick? What was the standard deviation? What can we expect for consistency? Uh, expect a lot. Um, so extreme spread was nine and the standard deviation was three. Um, 
that's excellent. I mean, that's just a really good shooting gun, and that's why one of the reasons it's so accurate. Uh, let's get back over here. Um, if we take a look at the Barracuda Hunter Extremes, um, those are, let's see, what are the weight on those? Okay, so 28 and some change uh, grains. We're looking at 909 feet per second. They get topped out, so 51 plus foot pounds. Uh, again, we'll talk about consistency there. Uh, extreme spread was only seven feet per second, standard deviation of two. Um, again, just really good. Again, I, I didn't top off between any of this. I filled it, I shot this entire video on one fill. Okay, I wanted to really stretch that shot count. Was it gonna work? Absolutely, it did. Okay, for the Grizzlies, just for giggles, let's see here if I go back to my list. The Grizzlies did 883 feet per second. Now they're 28 and some change uh, grain. Um, so we're looking at 53, basically 53 and some change foot pounds. Um, and let's see, on the consistency, seven feet per second. Now let's talk about a couple things that maybe if there's a gauntlet three, we would like to see. Okay, so they've already done a great job bringing this to the next level. Um, the trigger is you know, it is out of the box. It's got a really long creep, and you can adjust that out. There's a fine line between um, too much sear engagement and too little sear engagement. Finding that perfect position is uh, tricky, and so I don't know that I would recommend the average person fiddling with the trigger because it's very easy to potentially over adjust and then you don't have enough sear engagement so you want that to be done by somebody who really knows what they're doing the cocking handle they've done a lot to try and make it easier to cock they've given you this big fat grip which really does help it gives you some meat to hold on to i still find it kind of hard to cock the gun now they say it's easier and probably on you know if you put a pull gauge on it or something it probably is um but it is, it, it, you have no mechanical advantage when you're cocking this. You're just pulling straight back against the spring. Um, it certainly didn't deter me from shooting the crap out of this thing today, nor would it deter me from buying the gun either. It's just be aware it takes a little force to cock the gun. Now, the way I do that, just to save myself some headache, is I put my thumb at the back here, and I just use my thumb as a lever, and that does tend to help. There it is. Stop rolling around. That tin's empty because I'm out. There, done. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about the trigger. We've talked about the pull um, we've, as far as the cocking. Um, let's talk about the noise. So the noise level on this, we did run some DB tests today. And look, my DB tests are not in a scientific, perfectly controlled environment. They're out here. I'm 4,600 feet, which in and of itself yields some variants. Uh, um, we got 104, 106, 102. It's sort of in that range uh, is about what we're getting for our DB tests, which is about what I would expect. Um, I'll tell you that it really doesn't sound that loud to me. Uh, and it may be that just the sound pressure level and that, that fraction of a second crack that my meter's picking up, it just picks that up and that's what it's registering. But that's what the meter registers, so uh, I don't know what else to tell you on that. It is what it's getting. Now, let's talk about what you guys really care about, which is going to be the accuracy. Okay, so the first shot group I got here, uh, if you guys take a look at that, I mean, that is just impressive. You guys sort of see the size of that group. Um, that's got to be easily cover that with a quarter all day long. I mean, that is just really good. Now, the, the pellet that I was really excited about uh, when I was done after shooting it was the Barracuda Hunter Extremes, because look at this. I mean, I had a couple, either I pulled them or maybe there's tiny little bit of flyers on me, but look at all of those. I can put my pinky there. <laughs> I mean, that is really, really good um, out of the Barracuda Hunter Extremes, which means that you may not be like relegated to just one pellet in this gun. You may have some options. So as you can pick up some other pellet options out there, you may find that this has some flexibility so it's not just one pellet only. Um, you may find that it shoots a lot of different pellets well. The other thing I wanna say really quick about, quickly about that is the magazines are quite thick. Um, so there's space in there for 
Maybe some short slugs. I mean, I'm guessing you guys are gonna shoot those. Um, and also, I would say polymags will not be a problem at all. So you have the option to run different types of ammo uh, through this gun, and I think you're gonna get some good results. Now, when we got down to the Grizzlies, eh, not so much, eh, it was worth a shot, but uh, they kind of went squirrely. This one's right here. These are the Grizzlies right here. So they kind of spread out. Um, and I know you guys were gonna wanna see Hey, Rick, what about the regular 25 cal JSBs? Well, I knew having shot, you know, a gauntlet at higher pressure before that it was just gonna be going too fast. And that's pretty much the case. So this right here, uh, these are the regular 25-4 JSBs that's pushing these too hard. So when you can slow that down with a heavier pellet and you can drop into that, that's what you want to be shooting. The Mark II's really did well. I would like to shoot a little bit more with some of the heavier H&N uh, pellets to see what else they got in their stable that may also yield some good results uh, in this gun. But all in all, she shot great. Um, just a really, really good offering from Umarex. A great way to take the gauntlet to the next level and deliver a lot of value like the price has gone up a little bit from or from the original, but we are getting a lot more gun here. I'm gonna to get to play with this a whole lot more, and I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but I'm excited to have the opportunity to spend some more time with this gun. Just a really, really uh, fun gun to shoot and a great price point. I know that there's some other options on the market that are competing for this sort of area. This is gonna be one of those top contenders. Uh, it really is a great, great little air gun. Guys, that's going to be it for now. My name is Rick Utsu here with Airgun Web, old school air gun reviews. This review has been brought to you by Umarex USA. Thanks for watching.